it's going great, you know. We, uh, uh, we're having a great week so far. It's a great week of preparation, and uh, everyone's really locked in and focused on what we need to do and in order to finish out the season strong. So no complaints from me. Do you watch things like the college football playoff selection show last night? Yes, I, I saw it last night. And, of course, like, sometimes you don't even have to watch it. You can just get on Twitter or Instagram or anything like that, and you can see the reactions of people, the the results, the outcome. So I, you know, I, I just get it from from Twitter and other things like that. You surprised you're number one? <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean we're lucky enough to uh, have stayed that same spot all year, and you know we just got to keep playing like we have been, and we'll be, you know, hopefully we stay there. You, as a player, how important is it to be able to control your own fate, your own, you know, obviously your own road ahead? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, just you don't want to put your own fate into the hands of you know a committee like if you can stay undefeated obviously that's what you want to do because if you're 10 and 0 and you win the SEC and you and you, you win all of your games then no one can deny you that number one spot and that's a great feeling just to know you're in your own driver's seat and you don't have to leave it up to you know some people on a committee um, so obviously you want to you know control your own destiny in college football did, uh, Nick, sorry, did Nick and the coaching staff address the rankings at all you guys? No, um, I mean, no one really talks about it here. I mean, we all know we're number one right now, um, but we just put our nose to the grindstone. We work hard every day. We're just trying to not slip up um, and really just do what we can do to get back to that same spot we were last year. What do you think this, and you guys getting in the red zone, sometimes getting a touchdown, is there an issue there? What happens, do you think, when you get to the 20-yard line? Um, I don't think it's it's um, so much of a of a certain issue. I think it's just simply just not executing. I mean, we know what we have to do. We work on it all the time in practice. It's just sometimes things just don't go your own way in the red zone, and defense gets tighter. You have less room to work. Um, it's just the red zone's a hard place to score. I mean, as you all know, and uh, we just got to keep working and get better at it, and uh, you know we'll get it fixed. It was pretty obvious. How do you feel that that, that did? It seemed like there were quite a few uh, passes around the line of scrimmage and not so many maybe downfield. Um, you know, we have such a, such a wide array of different passes and, and plays that we can pick from. You know, it's really hard to, to just kind of focus on one thing, like you said, passing downfield. Um, Jalen's such a good quarterback that we can do, you know, a lot of different things, whether it be, you know, running screens or throwing the short passes on the go uh, on the line of scrimmage to, to airing it out. So we're really just trying to make it more comfortable for him and really, you know, just kind of instill his confidence more and more and just really just, you know, broadening his horizon so we can just become a more complete team and a more complete offense. Tell me your thoughts on Deron Payne on defense. What, uh, what makes him such a special player? Oh my gosh, he's, he is an athletic specimen. I mean, as you guys have seen, he is probably the strongest dude on our team, if not one of the strongest. Um, I mean, he's just, his quick twitch, his explosion, his power is something that I've never seen, you know, out of a D lineman, especially for being how young he is. Like, I think he's younger than me. And that's just, for him to be that strong and that fast and that just a complete player at, you know, just being a sophomore is, is incredible. So. Um, obviously, he, and he's a great leader on our defense too, which is something that people don't talk about a whole lot. But he's a, a great leader. I know you probably don't go up, you know, one on one with him or something uh -huh. like that. But Anthony Everett, what have you, have you seen him kind of evolve this season? You know, uh -huh. uh, in his first year starting. Well, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to go against him, but uh, um, just everything he's kind of taken his game to a new level since last year you know he played quite a bit last year um, as a freshman and just what he's done um, from a knowledge aspect to making plays to being a formidable run stopper in the middle um, has really you know helped our defense strive and was one of the reasons why our defense is playing so great right now just his presence in the middle and I think you know we would we would greatly miss him if he wasn't there how much confidence does having a running back like Josh Jacobs that can kind of make people miss or break tackles uh -huh. How much does that give you, you know, if you miss a block, you, you, yeah. he's going to beat the guy yeah. anyway? Uh, it, it's, it gives you great confidence, you know, just to see that. I, it's not so much that I have to, you know, pancake a guy. I just have to get in the way just so he can, can make a cut or he can, you know, run past the guy because he's such an elusive, shifty back that, and, and they all are, but, you know, as you saw with Josh's run where he, like, cut twice and made two guys miss, like, when he went down to the five, that just really highlighted how explosive and how quick he really is and how he's just scratching the surface of what, you know, how great of a player he's going to be if he keeps developing. Is that vision, 
weird to see from a freshman? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, that vision is weird to see from anybody, I think, especially from a freshman. Um, just, you know, how, how well he gets it already, and he's so young. And, you know, our offense isn't simple by any means. It's very complicated. So for him to be able to make those plays and have that kind of vision is something that, you know, gives us a lot of hope and is one of the reasons why we have so much confidence in him. What do you feel, though? obviously on the depth chart, you have the two tight end spots, but you know, what do you feel is unique about the tight end position here in Alabama, kind of how they utilize that? Well, um, I would say tight end in general, and especially here, is such a unique position because of everything you're asked to do. Especially here, you know, we're doing everything from pass blocking to run blocking to blocking in space, blocking on the edge to running deep routes, running short routes, um, being asked to play on the goal line. I say, and then. Another thing is just having an, uh, an overall knowledge of the playbook. Because not only do we have to know all the receiving routes, we have to know the line calls, we have to know like where exactly the run's going to go, because it's, it's a very technical position. And not only do you have to be a tackle, but you also have to be a wide receiver. So I would say just a combination of, of those two skills makes it really unique. A couple more. You guys don't really pay attention to awards, but uh, J.K. Scott kind of got left off of the Ray, uh, Ray Guy Award. Did you guys talk to him about that, or is there a little bit of fuss and walker about that? Um, I, I saw some stuff over Twitter and things like that, but I mean, obviously, he's a very deserving punter. I mean, I think he's the best punter in the country. Um, he's my punter, of course, but what JK has done for our team is, is, is something that can't be measured in awards. It's, it's being a great leader. Um, he's a great man, um, and he just kickstarts our special teams. As you guys have seen, he launches the ball, and that, you know, is. Even though, even if he might not get an award, what he means to our team is is you can't put a price on it. You talk about the tight end position. What has uh, Coach Cristobal brought to that? You know, helping y'all individually. Uh, you know, after dealing with the offensive line for so many years. Uh, just overall, a better understanding of how to block. Because I mean, in high school, I I played in a spread offense, so I mean, I knew how to block, but just the. the all the techniques, you know, where to put your hat, your feet, your hands. That's something that I didn't really know too well until I got here and he really started teaching us. So just kind of teaching us more, you know, of an offensive lineman mentality in all of our blocks. And I think that's really helped us become a better blocking unit. And he knows quite a bit in the passing game too. And uh, just all the things that he's taught us has really helped us evolve as a unit. Thanks, Joe. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the run paint, he's a he's a great guy. You know, he's enthusiastic, athletic. I mean, whatever you want to call it. I mean, he's he's all of that. So just having a guy like that on our team is always always fun. I'll ask you, um, what, what does Anthony ever? How have you seen him progress mm. in that secondary as he's been a, a first time starter this season? I mean, um, he's progressing to the guy that I knew he was going to progress into. I mean, that's the reason why he started this year. Um, you know, just with the past game that he just played, I mean, he played lights out. Um, I mean, I just seen him consistently improve each and every game and each and every week, and I expect him to do the same next week, this week and next week. Can you run faster than him? Nah, I'm straight up honest with you. He, he pretty fast, though, but, I mean, if you put me in a little training facility, give me a couple hills <laughs> and a couple ladders, I'll probably be there. <laughs> how hard is it to get to running back like Josh Jacobs, and how, how mm -hmm. hard is he to wrap up? Yeah, it's pretty difficult. I mean, it, I mean, it's not even so much his speed. I mean, it's the fact that he can, you know, break tackles. You know, he always he's that type of guy that can break one tackle and get to the next level. Is it? I mean, just what is it about his ability to break tackles? I mean, why is it mm. so difficult to wrap a guy like that? I mean, it, some to be honest with you, um, just this type of mentality. You got to have that kind of like a one-two type of mentality. I mean, when he runs the ball, he wants to score. He doesn't just want to just run out of bounds or just kind of get 10 yards and be down. I mean, is he, he when he gets the ball, he's going to try to score each and every time. What's his personality like? What, what's, what's he like off the field? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's an enthusiastic guy as well. I mean, just when his enclosed space or area, the guys the type of type of the guys that he hangs with, you know, he's, he's enthusiastic. But I would say kind of outside, you know, he's kind of more of like standoffish a little bit. But other than that, I mean, he's a great guy. Tony Brown, it took a while to see the field this year. The mm -hmm. injury got him in there. What, what have you seen from him? And Seems like a lot of guys root for him on this team. Yeah, me and personally, I root for him. I've always rooted for Tony. I mean, me and Tony have a close relationship, and like any other any, any other guys that play on the defense right now, I expect him to do exactly what he did on this this last game. I expect him to you know continue to prove each and every week. What is it about him that the guys look for him to the game? Um, the the thing I would say about him, uh, just with all of the things that he's been through, he's the type of guy that you know who's faced a lot of adversity. He's uh, just grown from it. 
and just with any other thing that he may face down in the future, I know he'll be ready for it. You've been facing this offense every year in practice. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the biggest difference from when you were freshman to now with the Alabama's offense? Um, to be honest with you, um, just with Lane Kiffin and his – his schemes and stuff, um, he's opened the offense up a lot. And he's gotten guys like, you know, Darius Stewart and Calvin Ridley the ball. You know, they've always opened things up like that for them to get the ball and be able to, you know, make plays. Um, just with the whole scheme, I mean, it's always a good thing for guys like us on defense to be able to face guys like that and also be able to go through, you know, practice and be able to see different things that, um, you know, good offense will, you know, show you. So I would say that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's always a back and forth thing, you know, with the offense and defense, and that's the reason why. I mean, it makes our team so great because we're all competitive. We always want to win. We always want to be the best. So, just with that that whole situation, I mean, that's what makes us so great. How much do you see his growth off the field? Kind of mm -hmm. you talk about kind of what he's dealt with in his personal life. Mm -hmm. Seeing him kind of grow up as, as a man a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just with his off off field growth. I mean, he's. Like I said, man, done everything that I knew he was going to do. I mean, just not even only just with him. I mean, just guys in general like me as well. I mean, just going through college, you know, you go through years of just going through this whole program. Eventually, you're going to, you know, kind of become a man in a way. And I think that's exactly what he's done too and also me as well and the guys that, that go here. Which coaches kind of helped with you the most in that area or regard? Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest with you, all of our coaches do that. Um, uh, the, probably the, the one coach I would say most probably be uh, Jerry Pruitt, my um, position coach. I mean, um, you know, he's always given us not just, you know, X's and O's, but he's always given us, you know, life concepts about how we should approach life. And that's the one thing I, I like about Jerry Pruitt. What's maybe a life concept that you kind of mm -hmm. taking to heart the most from Pruitt? I mean, I, the number one thing I would say, um, you know, I mean, the game of football, you know, it's a, it's a game and, you know, we all love the game, but, you know, there's bigger things other than football, you know, with family and friends and all those things. He's always telling us to kind of just enjoy those things and also enjoy the time that you do have around your, the guys that are here. Um, because, I mean, to be honest with you, you know, we're embarking on history right now. So it's, it's always good for you to just kind of slow down and just, you know, and live in the moment. I mean, uh, I mean, just like if, I mean, we treat we want to treat each and every game the same. But I mean, I'm not really worried about the Iron Bowl. But I do, I will say the Iron Bowl is, I mean, just me and personally a, a game that I always look forward to. I always circle on my calendar. But I mean, other than that, I mean, just as a team, and we always try to you know focus on that that one game that that one week. So I would say that. Coach, along those same lines. From the end of fall camp when you mm -hmm. started preparation for Southern Cal, did practice change mm -hmm. from that first week through the year? Is it different this week than it was mm -hmm. I mean, back then? To be honest with you, it's, it's really been the same. Um, the, the dangerous part about that is if you do change anything, you know, your performance may be different. So I think Coach Saban does a good job of just making sure that we do everything the same and try to keep that, keep basically everything consistent, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, I'm all for it. I mean, I, I would, we, the guys that we have here are all competitive. We want to play the best guys, and if, if that can happen, I'm all for it. Uh, Carson, aren't you uh, who you are now, and then obviously three now against Auburn, you kind of keep that record book in the back of your head? I mean, we're not really worried about the record. It's just, you know, we like I said, man, we just try to, you know, approach each and every game the same, man. You know, if we do go three and zero, that's that's great. But um, just like I said, man, you know, each week we always had this model of being one and zero each and every week. So we can just be one and zero each and every week. We'll, you know, we'll be happy. Is the win streak an awesome win streak for you? You guys ever talk about that? No, not really. I mean, cause I mean, once you lose, then it's over. So it's kind of like we just kind of you know make sure that we, like I said, man, try to stay one and zero each and every week. And then I mean, once. Once this thing is all over with, then we can celebrate about it, you know? Any, any closer to getting the live elephant? 
See, hey, I'm working on. To be honest with you, I'm working on that. I am, I'm actually working on that. I've been talking to a couple of people about that though, so we're gonna see. <laughs> see, I haven't got to that yet. See, I need. I, I need. That's what I'm saying. See, I, we in the season right now. I need a little bit more time. So after the season, then we can kind of you know get in negotiation about that. Yeah, I appreciate it.